Welcome to your bar class. Today, we're gonna wanna start with a Pilates ball and a set of lightweights, one, two, or threes. I'm gonna have threes as an option. You'll also eventually need a chair or something to hold onto for balance, but for now, we're gonna start on the floor. So grabbing your Pilates ball. If you don't have a Pilates ball, like a pillow or something you can place behind your back, go ahead and set one dumbbell off onto each side so they're ready to be reached with your hands. You're gonna take this Pilates ball right at the base of the thoracic spine. So imagine placing it right underneath the back part of your rib cage, and then dig your heels into the floor with the knees slightly bent, toes are lifted. Weights should be right in arm's reach, so make sure they're one on each side. We're gonna reach the arms forward. We're gonna lower for two, lift for two. So the ball is acting as a support for us, but we're not really laying on it to use it. We're really trying to just use it there for some tactile connection to keep us up and active. So a firm pillow, a rolled up or a folded up blanket, anything that you have if you don't have a ball can be really helpful. Soften through your shoulder heads. Try not to shrug and add tension through the neck. You have a nice long spine and we're just activating through the core to get us nice and warm, nice and primed for our class today. All right, hold it down. We're gonna do a little pulse. So it's like a one inch movement up and down. Nice and easy. Keep reaching those arms forward. Shoulders are soft. And I'm just barely leaning into the ball and coming back off of it. So we're not laying into the ball. <laughs> just a little lean back, little lift. Little lean, little lift. Now think of hollowing out the belly, scooping in the core, so you're staying really strong here. Keep digging your heels into the floor, that's really important. Soften those shoulder heads, lengthen through the neck. One more, hold at the bottom part of that lean, stack your hands, we're gonna twist right elbow towards the floor, come up through center. Left elbow towards the floor, come up through center. Now if you need a little bit of support, you can always have one hand on the knee for support, and then twist side to side. If having the hand stacked doesn't feel good for you, you can always use your legs as a support system. So listen to your body, adjust accordingly, but hopefully starting now to feel the sides of the core warming up. And again, we're just kind of laying onto that ball a little bit. It's not holding all of our weight. It's just giving us a tactile feedback so we're staying honest in our range of motion the entire time. You got this, stay in it. Take one more each direction. So when you end on the left, we'll stop. Now come through center. Everybody lower your elbows towards the floor. We're gonna lift up onto the hands, lower the elbows back down. Lift up onto the hands, lower the elbows back down. So hopefully feeling that core still supporting you. Because when the elbows touch, we're not really all the way down. <laughs> that ball again is just giving us that feedback. Two more, one more. Now if that ball kind of rolled out underneath the base of the ribs, you might need to adjust it. Arms reach forward, back to where we began. Up for two, down for two. Up for two, down for two. We're gonna grab those weights, optional. You never have to, but if they're there for you, you've got them, one, twos, or threes. I wouldn't go heavier than fives. <laughs> But on the next time you lift, grab those weights, reach them forward. We're gonna take the elbow back to tap, just like we did in our twist. And then the other arm extends forward. It's like a bow and arrow. Nice and long, super strong here, you got it. Again, you're just using that ball for tactile feedback. Try not to lean into it too much. But the chest is behind the belly button really strong here. One more, each side, and then we're gonna do both arms together. If that's too much, feel free to keep with the alternation. Take it back and up. Back, tap the elbows, and back up. Both arms. We're gonna add a little pulse here in two, so we're gonna hold towards the back where the elbows are close to the floor, little tap and reach. So the arms are not extending. Draw your navel in towards your spine, really strong here. Four. Three, two, one, and bring it up. Nice job. <laughs> All right, go ahead and bring it up. Grab your chair, move to a countertop, whatever you have available at home to support you in some balanced stuff for bar. Bring your ball with you. 
If you don't have a ball, a yoga block or something that you'll be able to put behind your knee for some bar work. And go ahead and just set your hand weights on your chair because eventually we'll come to a seated posture for some upper body work. <laughs> but we're going to be using the ball to support us in our leg. So ground your left foot on the floor. We're going to take the ball behind the right knee. Find this 90 degree bend so you're really squeezing that ball. It's like you're trying to make your heel touch your glute. You're going to, if you're, depending on the height of your chair, you may stay up on the hands. If you have a really tall back chair, you may come up on the elbows, but you want to keep your chest pretty lifted. So we're just going to take this out to the side for two, lower for two, and then straight behind us for two, lower for two, out to the side, and then straight to the back. Now focus on your standing leg. There's a slight bend in the knee, so we're already starting to get into that left standing leg. Again, depending on the height of your prop, you can either be on the elbows or on the hands. All right, we're going single. So just open to the side, straight to the back. Now, don't let the ball be lazy here. You really want to squeeze that ball. So imagine you're trying to get your heel to touch your booty. So it's really strong. That back leg is really engaged on the right side. You're feeling your hamstring and your booty. Chest is nice and tall, slight hinge forward from the hips. We're going to hold to the back in five, four, three, two, hold to the back, just lower and lift straight back behind you. Now bend your left knee a little bit more so you're starting to feel that left glute, that left butt cheek start to kick in. Keep drawing your right heel towards your booty, squeezing that ball in place. Three, we're going to pulse it in two, hold it here, little pulse. Pulse. Now make sure this left leg's not locked out. There's a little bend in that left leg. Really strong through those legs here. All right, from the top, we're going in for two, to the side for two. Take it back for two. Woo! To the side for two. How is that left booty cheek feeling? <laughs> Shake it out if you need to, and then get right back into it. Ball behind that right leg. One more, we're going to take it into singles. Now you have an option here to take your left hand away. So as you take the leg out to the side, the left arm lifts to the side, bent elbow. As you take it back, same thing. If that's too much, you want to keep both arms down on your chair, your countertop, whatever you're using, keep that. Oh my goodness, my left glute is on fire. You got this, come on. All right, take it to the back, singles to the back. Woo! Slight bend in that left leg. We got this six, five. We're coming into that pulse in four, three, two. Hold it at the top. Little pulse, pulse. Straight back behind you, pulse, 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 pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. Whoo, walk it off, shake it off. Left leg, hopefully, <laughs> really felt that. <laughs> Pound it out, shake it out, stretch it out, whatever you need. <laughs> okay, we're going to focus a little bit more on the calves now. So you're using your um, chair still for balance. You're going to turn your toes slightly out, heels facing in towards each other. Go ahead and come up onto the balls of your feet so you're balancing. And then walk it in until your heels are actually touching. Again, that, that chair or something is there for balance. Now, we're going to zip it up, navel to spine, stand up nice and tall. The ball is just in your right hand. We're just holding on to it. You don't necessarily need it. We're going to lower for two, lift for two. Lower for two. Now, depending on the height of your chair and if you want to level up, you can set your ball there, taking away a little bit of your stable surface, making it a little bit more unstable. So that's an option if you want to level up. <laughs> If that doesn't feel safe for you, just keep your hand on the stability of your chair, not unstabilizing your surface. Now we want to really focus on not just pushing the butt out and arching the back. So zip that, that navel towards your spine. Hold it down halfway. We have a little pulse, a little pulse. So make sure you're not arching that low back. You want to think of heavying your tailbone and your hips are slightly tilted towards the front anterior body. Whew. 
Starting to feel all of the legs fire up. Hopefully you're feeling inner thighs and booty. A little bit of calf work too because we're on the balls of the feet, right? The heels are lifted. Little pulse. Very little weight in the stabilizing arm. So your legs are doing all of the work here. Three, two, hold at the bottom. Legs open a little bit. They come back in a little bit. Open a little bit, in a little bit. So all we're doing is like old school thigh mastering the inner thighs. Taking the knees a little wide, a little together. Now, as you get tired, you may start to tilt the pelvis back. Heavy the tailbone. Keep that navel nice and strong. Whew. Core engaged, low back neutral. All right, we're going to put those two moves together. We pulse, we bring it in and out. Pulse, in and out. Inner thighs. <laughs> lower, squeeze, lower, squeeze. Whoo. Stay on the balls of the feet. Inner thighs on fire. Heavy that tailbone, lift your chest. Whoo. You got this. Stay in it. Come on. Inner thighs, maybe feeling like you've rubbed menthol, icy hot on them. <laughs> Stay in it. Stay up on the balls of the feet. Keep the heels lifted and the heels together. That's important. Four, three, two, one. Hold at the top, but there's still that slight bend. We're going in for two, out for two. Slowly lowering as you open and close. Slowly lowering each time. One more. And stand up. Shake it out. <laughs> nice job. Nice job. All right, if you're using a chair, we're actually going to have a seat on it. If you don't have a chair, don't worry about it too much. You can stand for this next sequence. Keep your ball. If, again, if you don't have a ball, a yoga block can be really nice here. We're going to take the ball between the lower inner thighs closer towards the knees. You have your light hand weights, one, twos, or threes. So we're curling and supinating pressing. Curl to a 90 degree, press straight out in front of your chest, bring it back down, and in. Now the legs aren't lazy here. Squeeze the ball. <laughs> And be honest with yourself as you get tired, if you start to just be slack here and the ball is just kind of resting, reactivate those inner thighs. Draw your navel towards your spine, sit up nice and tall. And again, if you don't have a chair, you're doing all of this standing. So just a little focus for the upper body. Imagine wrapping the elbows towards each other as you press out in front of the chest. All right, in just a moment, we're going to hold the extension. We're going to do just a little micro bend pulse. I'm going to turn somewhat at the diagonal so you can see better. So we have a little bend and extend, bend, extend, bend, extend. So what we want to avoid here, though, is adding tension by shrugging the shoulders. Soften through the shoulders, little bend and extend. Now, be honest, if the ball is getting slack, re-engage those inner thighs. So it's this little micro bend and extension. You got this. Stay in it. You got this. Little bend and extend. Focusing on those biceps. We're going to add a little bigger, just the supination. In for two. Extend for two. In for two. Extend for two. It's like you're serving a platter. You got this. One more. We're going single tempo. In and out. In, out. Squeeze that ball between your inner thighs. Don't let it get slack. Ooh. Two more. We're going to sweep it towards the side. So the next time you take it out, keep that micro bend in the elbow. We sweep it wide and together. Sweep it wide and together. Squeeze that ball between the inner thighs still. Now a little bicep and shoulder focus. One more. We're going to take this to single tempo. So it's just in and out. So soft through the elbow, but we're not shrugging the shoulders. Whoo. We're going to do that little micro bend push towards the side in three, two, hold it towards the side, little bend and extend, little micro bend and extend. Not much of a bend. Keep it really, really small tempo here. Whoo. 
Now big tempo, elbows come in towards your ribs, big extension out, all the way in, all the way out. One more, we're gonna hold it all the way out and we come back to those little micro bends, little pulse, in and out. Woo. Stay in it, you got this, come on. Now if the inner thighs are getting lazy, re-squeeze that ball. Three, we're going full range to the side. Two, how those biceps feeling? All the way in, Whew. all the way out, shoulder height. Make sure we're not pressing out higher than your shoulders. One more, we're gonna come into wrist rotations on the extension, so extend it out. We turn floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling. You're gonna keep that as we slowly walk it towards the front. Shoulder heads down, let go of that tension. One more, and lower it in, and release. <laughs> nice job. All right, let's come back to our chair. Keep your ball. All right, set your um, weights and your ball down. We're going to focus a little bit more on the inner thighs now. So you can face your chair if that's more helpful for you, or you can face away if you like to just have one hand for balance. I'll leave that up for you. I'm going to show you at the diagonal. Hopefully you can see my feet. <laughs> But we're going to turn the feet out between 10 and 2, 9 and 3. I think it'll be better at this angle. So again, the, the chair can be in front of you for balance or off to the side. We're going to go down for 2, up for 2. Now if you want to add the arm, feel free to sweep it, make it a lot more ballet-ish. Or you can just let the hand rest on the hip if that feels more natural for you. We're going to hold it down on this next one. We have a little tiny pulse. So just like we did in our first position, in our releve, but now we're just holding it and pulsing with the feet wide. Heels are still somewhat in towards each other. Toes are still turned out. Targeting the inner thighs. We want that same thing, though. Heavy your tailbone, tilt your pelvis slightly forward. So we're not laying into the low back, which will feel really uncomfortable really fast. Nice job. Stay in this pulse. Stay in this pulse. We're going single ring repetition. So we come all the way up and all the way down. All the way up, all the way down. Now don't focus too much on the standing at the top. We wanna to find the deepness at the bottom of the plie, so as far down as you can go. We're gonna lift the left heel the next time we lower down. So lower down and hold. We lift the heel, lower the heel. Keep that right foot nice and heavy, nice and grounded. Three, two, we're gonna hold the heel up. We have a little pulse in the plie. Keep the knees driving out and wide, hopefully still feeling the inseam of your legs. Heavy that tailbone, core engaged. Turn this into a double time pulse, pulse. Whoo, tiny little movement. It's like half an inch up and down. It's not big. Time under tension. Whoo, stay in this, stay in this. Three, we switch sides. Two, lower down, stand up. Right side goes, lower back to your plie. Lower and lift the heel. Right leg lifts and lowers. <sighs> Keep those legs turned out. Right heel lifts and lowers. Right heel lifts and lowers. <sighs> in three, we're going to hold it up. We have our slow pulse to begin. Hold that heel up. We go down an inch, up an inch. Nice and slow to start. We'll speed it up in a moment. Heavy that tailbone. Lift your chest. Try not to fold forward and try not to arch your low back. Keep everything nice and lifted, like you're literally stacking your chest on your hips. Three, we pulse it double time. Two, and quick pulse. Quick pulse, quick pulse, quick pulse. Whoo, inner thigh focus. Three, two, lower your right heel. Don't stand up, reach your arms forward. Drop a little bit in the hips, lift your arms overhead. Heavy that tailbone, navel to spine, no arching in the low back, so the hips are tucked under. Five, four, three, two, stand up, release. Whoo, inner thighs on fire. Shake it out, nice job. All right, we still have the other leg to do with the ball behind the knee. So grabbing your ball again. This time the right foot is gonna be on the floor. The ball will be behind the left leg. So I'll give you a moment to settle back into that. So if you did the opposite legs, just make sure the ball's on the opposite leg this time or the rolled up blanket or your yoga block, whatever you have. If you're with me though, the right foot will be heavy. The ball's gonna go behind the left knee. Again, depending on the height of the chair, you're either on your hands or you're on your elbows. 
two to the side, and then two straight back behind us. Now bring some awareness to the right leg. It is not straight and locked out. There's a slight bend in the right knee. Side for two, down for two. Take it back for two, lower for two. So this is really slow. Now the ball won't stay in place if you're not actively squeezing. So bring that heel to your booty. Squeeze that ball in place. One more, we're gonna take this into single tempo. So it's just out to the side and lower, straight back and lower. Slight bend in that right knee, navel to spine, you got this. Really firing up that right glute. Left leg is moving, but your stability muscles are working like crazy here. One more, we're gonna hold it straight back behind us and just go to the back. Just to the back, single counts. Bend that right knee. So what you wanna find here, keep, keep going, don't stop, but what you wanna find here is that your hip is over your shin. So if you're like way back here like this, <laughs> that's not gonna be good. So you wanna find your hip right on top of your shin. Your knee's gonna go a little bit more forward and that's okay, that's what you wanna find. When you're ready, hold it up, pulse, pulse. So there's a slight hinging from the hips. Your core is braced, there's no arching of the low back. You've got that little bit of an anterior tilt of the pelvis. All right, slow it down, in and back. Single tempo. Slight bend in that right knee. You got this. Stay in it. Stay in it. All right. From the beginning, two counts to the side, two counts behind us. Your standing leg hopefully is on fire by now. If not, what can you do to get there? Maybe bending the knee a little bit more. And if you're feeling in that low back, make sure you have that anterior tilt of the pelvis. We shouldn't be arching the low back here. <laughs> One more, take it straight back behind you. Now again, we have that option to take away the arm if you wanna make it a little bit harder. As the leg goes back, the arm lifts. If that doesn't feel good for you, ditch the arm, let's focus on the lower body. My right booty cheek is on fire. My whole right leg is literally shaking. <laughs> Two more, we're gonna take it into that pulse. All right, return the right hand to the chair if you added it away, and little pulse, little pulse, little pulse. Five, four, three, two, single tempo, in and out. Whoo, eight, seven, you're almost there. Again, if you're feeling that low back, make sure you have that tilting of the pelvis forward. If we're feeling in the low back, we're probably doing this through the low back, and that will not feel good. One more, and release. Nice job, shake it out, walk it off. <laughs> okay, go ahead and remove your chair off to the side. We're gonna come to the floor for a little bit more work. You also no longer need your Pilates ball or whatever you were using in place of a Pilates ball. So go ahead and come to the floor. We have a little bit of core work. Now again, option, light hand weights, one, twos, or threes. I'm gonna stay with threes, see how it goes. <laughs> All right, take a moment, maybe wiggle the hip leg side to side, release through the hips. Just like we did in the beginning though, we're gonna have the weights right off to the side of both hips. So that way they're there and ready to reach for. When you're ready, come all the way down. You can set your hands underneath your sit bones if that feels really helpful for you. And bring your knees into a tabletop position so your shins are parallel at the ceiling. We're gonna bring the knees in for two and extend out for two. In for two, out for two. Two more just like that, nice and slow, bringing the knees in and then slow, extend them out one more. Now bring both knees into the chest, zip the knees together. We're gonna extend the legs out slowly. Four, three, two, one. Hold your hover, four, three, two, one. Bring it in in one. Let's do that again. Slowly extend the legs, keeping them as close to the floor as your body will allow. And then hold for three, two, one. Bring it in. Again, nice and slow on the way out. Finding your lowest point, legs as close to the floor as you can get them without your low back lifting up. Whew. Keep it going at this tempo. If you notice your low back start to arch a whole lot, keep your legs up a little bit higher when you get to that hover hold. Draw your navel into your spine, broaden your low back onto the floor.
One more. All right, we're going in for two, out for two. So out, two, in for two. Out, two, in, two. Two more, just like that, slow. Now the next time you extend your legs, hold, you're gonna turn to that first position like when we were standing. So heels are touching, toes are turning out from one another like you're making a little V. Bring your legs up so they're like halfway between towards the ceiling and towards the floor. You're gonna bend the knees, bring your heels towards your pelvic floor for two, and then push the heels towards the wall or the ceiling for two. In for two, out for two, in for two. Now keep your low back grounded here. In for two, out, two. Heels are touching, toes are turned out. All right, little pulse, little bend and extend. Bend, extend, bend. So you're not bending your knees all the way. It's just like you're bringing them to a little bit position and then straightening them out. Hip flexors and low core, hopefully feeling this. The next time you straighten your legs, hold, just point and flex your feet. Point, flex, point, flex, point. Keep your heels together. We're gonna grab our weights. Oops, mine are a little far away. Three, two, one, hold it. Arms are reaching up. Now flutter, switch your legs, crisscrossing them. The weights are optional. You do not have to grab them. If you prefer, keep the hands under your hips. That's always there for you. Stay in it, you got it. Now add a lowering of the legs while you keep this fluttering, nice and slow, controlled. Now bring it back up. Almost there. Lower it again, keep the flutter. Now again, just like we did when we were lowering and lifting the legs or extending them, only lower to the point you can control through your lower back. Last time, lower, this is it, this is how we finish. Little flutter, lower, lower, lower. Hold your hover, four, three, two, and release. You made it. Nice job. Oh, awesome job on your bar workout. <laughs> All right, let's turn this into yoga. I'm gonna get some blocks. Uh, will be helpful. We're gonna do a little bit of a mobility flow. You won't need your chair anymore either. But blocks can be really helpful. I'll give you a minute to transition. I know going from craziness to not craziness. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so just a set of yoga blocks can be really helpful. <laughs> I see people still, still adjusting, so I'll give you another moment. All right, it looks like we are all almost there. Yeah, we're gonna start seated, Heather, if you wanna come back to the floor. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. Well, welcome to your now 15-minute mobility yoga flow. Uh, again, have a set of blocks that can be really helpful, but we're going to start seated. We're going to do some 90-90 movement through the hips. So taking your hands back behind you, I'm going to invite you to just take your legs a little bit wider than hip distance. Whatever that means for you. They can be really wide or they can be just a little bit wider than your hip bones. Using your hands for support, let both knees just gently fall over towards the left. And then slowly bring them back up through center. Gently let both knees fall over towards the right and then back through center. So that's all we're gonna do for now. So just move at a cadence that feels really good for you. Maybe moving a little slower allows you to tap into how that feels in the body and in the hips and in the knees. Maybe moving a little quicker feels more accessible. Just listen to your body, adjust accordingly. But what we're wanting to do through our practice today is really just find more mobility, specifically in the hips and shoulder joints. If you don't have a yoga block, just have something really lightweight, like an empty water bottle that you'll be able to just rest into the hand for some shoulder work. Now the next time you take both knees over to the right, go ahead and pause and stay. Now I'm gonna invite you to adjust your legs here. So we're actually in a 90-90. So the right knee lines up with your right hip and then your right ankle lines up with your right knee. And the same on the left side, your left knee lines up with your left hip and your left 
ankle lines up with your left knee. Now, if this um, arrangement doesn't feel good in your body, adjust the legs accordingly so it does. We're not necessarily lifting the right leg, but I want you to have the sense that as we start to fold the chest forward, it's as if you're lifting the leg, and that's going to help us activate through the hip to find the forward fold. And then as we start to lift the chest back up, we're going to push the leg as firmly into the floor as we can to lift the chest. So the leg is not actually going to be leaving the floor, but just that sense of pulling and pushing. So starting to sit up nice and tall. Slowly as you start to hinge from the hips to pull the chest forward, activate the leg as if you're trying to pick it up off the floor and use that to bring you forward. Once you're at the end of your fold, press the outer shin into the floor so it will lift your chest back up. So the leg is doing a lot of the work. As you inhale, lift the leg or that sense of lifting it to fold. And as you exhale, push the leg into the floor to lift back up. Let's do two more just like that. Actively lifting the leg to find the fold forward. Pushing the leg to come back up. One more just like that. Lifting. And pushing. And then lift the leg one more time to come forward. And then this time let the leg soften and just fold any way that feels good for your body coming into just this little 90-90 stretch here, letting the chest melt towards the leg. And take a couple of deep breaths, softening into the hips, releasing through the structure, muscular structure of the legs. Now to come up, firmly press that right leg into the floor. Maybe this time you use no hands, just that leg to drive you up right. Now take your right hand to the outside of your right hip. Lean towards your right enough that you can pick up your left leg. You're going to sweep your left leg out to the side. Pause. Point your left foot. Then keep sweeping it out in front of you. Once it's in front of you, bring your right leg to meet your left leg. Hold this boat pose, this V sit for three deep breaths. Two more breaths. Last deep breath. And we're going to use this to transition to the other side. So you're going to bring your left leg forward, slowly sweep your right leg behind you, and come into the 90 90 legs on the left side. We do that same thing, that sense of Lifting the leg as you inhale to fold. Pressing the leg into the floor as you exhale to lift. And you can use your hands to support you, but you can also take the hands away when you really let the legs do the work. Now on this next one, that sense of lifting the leg to pull you forward and then soften into your stretch, folding over that front leg. Take a few deep breaths here, just finding anything you can kind of passively relax into. Now this time, if you were using the hands, I'm going to invite you to try without the hands. Push your left shin into the floor to bring you upright. And really feel the legs doing the work, mobilizing through the hips. Left hand off to the left side, slightly to the left. We're going to use the hips to lift this right leg. Sweep it to the right side. Hold. Point the right foot. Slowly sweep the right leg around forward. Come back to your V-sit. Bring the left leg to meet the right. Hold for three deep breaths. And then slowly lower, crossing the legs, coming into tabletop position. You can stay where you are. I'm just going to grab my yoga blocks. They should be to the front of your mat. Once you're near tabletop, take just a couple of cat-cows, decompressing the spine. But again, with that sense of mobility, maybe you move a little slower with a little bit more articulation, 
maybe feeling each little vertebra at a time. Maybe the tailbone leads in both directions. So once you're in cat, let the tailbone start to tilt up, then the low back, mid back, upper back, eventually the neck. And then again, maybe from cow, you tuck your tailbone under first as you start to round the low back, round the mid back, round the upper back, and eventually round the cervical spine, chin to chest. So a couple more times, just articulating and mobilizing through the spine. Spine is a bunch of joints meant to, to move. So finding that gentle decompression, just moving through the body. And then the next time you start to come back through and you can find a neutral spine, pause there. Go ahead and step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Start to lean forward so your right knee is coming a little bit past your right toes. Tuck your left toes under to lift your left knee. And when you're ready, step to the top of your mat. From your fold, hands slide up the shins, inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold back down. Grab one of your yoga blocks as you come back up to stand. And we're gonna mobilize through the shoulder. So taking your yoga block, you're gonna rest it in your hand. So try avoiding grabbing it. I'll show you from the short angle so you can see it. Try not to grab it. It's literally just resting in your hand. You're not holding it with your fingers. So we're gonna mobilize through the shoulder by bringing this all the way around. So to start, let your elbow be bent at 90 degrees and then slowly bring it out to the side. Let your body do what it's naturally gonna to do to sweep this arm under. So we're slowly gonna bring the block towards the belly. You'll probably hinge forward to widen your elbow. Don't grab the block, let it rest. Move your chest towards the left as the arm moves underneath of you. Slowly take it out towards the right side of your space, sweeping it forward, and eventually coming up to stand with the fingertips facing away. So now we reverse that. So to reverse it, let your fingertips point towards the left side of your space. Again, lean the body away. Sweep it towards the side. Try not to grab it. Let it just rest until you come back to start. And you can move really slowly and focus on the movements here. So let's go through that again. Starting with the elbow in, the hand turned out. Slowly bring the block in towards the ribs. Lean away to get it underneath of you. When the palm is facing towards the ceiling and you're leaning away, we're going to make a big circle all the way around, moving through that shoulder joint. So we land with the arm straight, fingers facing the back of your space. Turn so the fingers are facing the left side of the room. And let's reverse that. Keep the arm straight, reaching it out. And then underneath until you can come back to start. Nice. So now we'll do that same thing on the other side. <laughs> really practicing mobility. And if any of these are really hard as you transition through, this might be something you want to come back to and, and really focus on finding more mobility through your shoulder joint. So same thing, starting with the elbow in, hand out. Slowly start to rotate the fingers to face the body. You'll lean away. Try not to grab the block. Let it just rest on your hand. As you extend, circle it out. Keep the arm really straight, mobilizing and moving through that shoulder so you land with the straight arm at the top, fingers facing the back of your space. Turn so the fingers are towards the right. As you lean away, circling the arm down. Eventually, hinging from the hips, leaning forward, circling the arm underneath of you until you can come back to start, elbow in, palm out. And if you notice as you move here, there's a spot that's really sticky, then that might be something we wanna come back to and focus on to really find mobility and uh, rejuvenation of the joints and the tissue. We'll flow through that again, bring it underneath, slight lean forward, and then a lean away as you take it out towards the side. And then as we start to come up, you're mobilizing through that shoulder, bringing it all the way up, and behind you till the fingertips are facing the back of your space. Reverse that, fingertips towards the right side of your space, circling it around, coming all the way back through to start. Very nice job. All right, you can set your blocks off towards the front of your mat. We're gonna take just one sun salutation. So standing in Tadasana, mountain pose, feet under hips, 
As you inhale, reaching the arms up. As you exhale, fold over yourself. Sliding the hands up the shins, inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold and step the feet back. You can go right into down dog or take a chaturanga here, slowly lowering onto your belly. And then taking a back bend of choice, cobra or up dog. And then we'll meet in downward facing dog. Take two deep breaths once you're in down dog. On your next inhale, sweep your right leg up and back behind you, three-legged dog. As you exhale, we're going to bring the right knee towards the right forearm. We're going to sweep the right knee towards the left forearm. One more time, back to the right forearm, left forearm. Now kick the leg out from underneath of you so it's off to the left side of your mat and open up into your side plank. Now this may be where you stay. Or maybe you float your right leg and hold for three, for two, one. Lower it back down, come back through. Step your right foot to the hands. Grab your blocks here. Let your right knee come past your toes if that feels safe and comfortable. Feel that release through the left hip. And then sit the hips back, straighten your right leg and fold. Two more times just like that. Bending the knee, dropping the hips. Straightening the legs, sitting the hips back. One more time. And then setting your blocks off to the side, hands to the floor, step your right leg back, down dog. Take two breaths. We're going to finish on the other side. And I'll show you a variation if knees to forearm doesn't feel good in your body. Inhale, sweep the left leg up. Exhale, knee to forearm. Set your toes down. Keep your toes down. Just pivot so the knee is pointing towards the right forearm. Keep the toes down. Pivot knee to arm. One more time. Knee to right forearm. Kick it out towards the side. Open up to your side plank. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you float the left leg and hold for three, two, one. Slowly release. Step the foot forward. Grab your yoga blocks. Let the knee come forward, then sit the hips back and fold. Two more times. Last one. Set your blocks off to the side, step back, down dog. From here, lower your knees towards the floor. Walk your hands in, so in your tabletop position, traditional cat-cow, just moving through the spine. And we're going to finish with the wrist. So keep your right hand forward. Left hand will flip back, so the fingertips are towards the knees. Find a gentle rocking forward and back. And then switch it out, release. Left hand forward, turn the right hand so it's facing the knee. And then a gentle rock forward and back. Slowly release. Come to have a seat however is comfortable for you. We'll take a nice deep breath together to finish. Inhale, reaching the arms up. Audible exhale, hands to heart. <sighs> Thank you so much for joining me for this mobility flow. Have an amazing rest of your day, and until next time, be well.